of the best things to ever come out of Texas was chicken fried steak. I'm going to show you how to make it today. I didn't say it was healthy, but it is really tasty. For this recipe, I'm using the cube steaks that I bought on sale. I'm also using some all-purpose flour, one egg, about two-thirds a cup of milk, salt and pepper. The first thing you want to do is season your flour really well. If you don't season your flour, um, your meat is going to taste very flat. I have about a teaspoon and a half of salt here and about a half to one teaspoon of pepper. It really does require a lot of seasoning. I think I mentioned earlier in one of the other um, sections that this is usually a birthday meal at our house. I don't make it real often um, because it is fried and not calorie friendly, but it really is delicious. And if you are going to eat chicken fried steak, it's better to make it yourself. It's still going to be healthier than what you would get out. Over here, we take the egg and milk and just kind of loosely beat that up together. Okay? doesn't need to be real well blended. Then what you'll do is take each of your steaks and you'll dip them from the flour into the egg wash and then back into the flour. This does get a little bit messy. I've not found a way to do it that isn't messy. So just set your mind to it and figure that that's the way it's going to be. You need those really well coated because that's going to make a nice crust on the outside of your steaks when you fry them. You can even do this part a little bit ahead and then just set them aside on a rack to wait and then leave, cover them and leave them in the refrigerator for a few hours until you're ready to cook them. Okay, you can see I've got all the steaks breaded and they're sitting on the rack. Even if you're going to cook them immediately, you do want to let them set out for about 30 minutes so that that flour and egg wash has a chance to grab hold of the steak. Also, because you're going to be frying these, you need to let them come to room temperature. If you fry them when they're cold, they may not cook thoroughly and get all the way finished all the way through. You'll notice for this bigger steak, I actually cut it into smaller pieces. I just wanted to show you that that is an option if you're kind of worried about your meat cooking all the way through to the middle when you fry something, if you're a little bit unsure about that, this is a really good way to make sure that your things will get done in the middle and still be nice and crusty without being burned on the inside. It's also good for smaller portions or maybe just for making steak fingers that you can dip in gravy. So that is an option also is to cut these into pieces and make steak fingers. So now we're ready to cook the steaks. The first thing you want to do is put about an inch of oil in your skillet and heat that up on about a medium to medium high heat. Okay, so we've got the steaks ready to fry. And I've got the oil heating up in the pan. A, a good way that, to test your oil, if you've never seen this trick, is to take a little bit of flour and just drop it in there. Ideally, the, temple, the temperature that um, you want your oil to be when you're frying is about 375 degrees. So I'm going to start by adding these larger pieces of steak and you want to drop them in the oil away from you. That way if it splatters, it splatters away from you. Make sure you've got plenty of room in your skillet. You don't want to crowd the steaks. They're not going to cook evenly if you do that. Now you can see that these are frying at a nice even rate. You've got just a little bit of oil enough to cover the pan so that when I put the steaks in, the oil comes up to the side but not covering the top of the steaks. Resist the urge to turn your steaks a lot. You really only want to turn them one time during the cooking process. I've got this on just above medium heat. The trick is to get your oil to the point where your steaks will cook through to the middle before they cook on the outside. So you really do want to watch your temperature. The rate that you see these cooking at is really nice. I will turn it down just a little bit so that they don't cook too quickly. But again, I'm just going to leave these to cook on this side and I'm only going to turn them once. If you turn your breaded or floured or battered things more than once while you're cooking them, 
what happens is that the breading or the batter just falls off. It gets too weak and it can't hold on. So just let these go and then I'll show you what they look like when they turn. I'll actually time it for you so I can tell you how long it's taken them to cook on this first side. Okay, these steaks have been cooking on this side for about two or three minutes. And let me just turn one up so you can see. I want you to look on the sides of them here. Right there you can see by that color that they've started to brown. If you'll watch that and watch the middle of the top of them, you can get a clue as to the fact that they are getting brown on the bottom and so that they are getting done and you can go ahead and turn them. Again, that way you don't have to keep lifting them and setting them down because that's what makes your batter come off. So just take the edge of this one and you can see that's perfectly brown. So we'll go ahead and turn that over. I have had to turn the heat down to just a bit under medium. This is an electric stove so it's a little bit um, touchy. You kind of have to turn things down before you need them, the heat to be reduced. Okay. So these look really good. This one, you can see it actually could have gone another minute or so on that side to cook. But these have been in the skillet cooking now for about three minutes. Okay, let's check these on the second side and see how they're doing. It's been another about four or five minutes. That one is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that off to the side. Let me just show you, I've got um, a paper plate here that I'm just gonna put these on so that they can drain. Soak up the little excess oil. This one looks good. We'll take that off as well. Now that I've taken those two off, I'm going to go ahead and add these strips. Remember, I cut a couple of them into strips, and you'll see that these will cook a lot faster. And we'll check this one that seems to be in the stubborn part of the skillet. And that looks okay, too. That's, that's good. So now we'll cook those strips. These are doing really nicely. I just flipped them over. Doesn't that make you happy to see these nice, crusty little brown chicken fried steaks in the skillet? It makes me happy. Okay, let's take a look. These little monsters are perfectly done. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those from the skillet. The next thing I will do while these are draining is pour off some of this fat and make a cream gravy. But I'm going to do a second video on that in case you already know how to make gravy. You don't need to sit through it. But if you don't know how to make gravy, that might be the one you want to look at and then you won't have to sit through all the chicken fried steak stuff if you just need to know how to make gravy. So look for that recipe too.